the first season was so much about struggling to deal with that identity crisis. We definitely wrote ourselves into a corner a lot. Almost every episode. <laughs> and then definitely in the finale, we pretty much drove the whole mess off a cliff. For me, that's always been the fear of doing any series is, is like complacency. But there's too much to deal with on this show that I don't feel like we ever kind of fall into that. It just moves too fast. It's easier in the sense that a lot of the world has already been established. We're always raising the bar on one another, both script-wise and then directorially. Maybe we don't really want it to get easier. Picking up the season two after all the cliffhangers, we've got more people, more threads, it always becomes an exercise in what story don't we tell. Basically coming back to season two was really cool in a bunch of respects because we wrote season one knowing that if there was a season two where a lot of this might go. We didn't have all the answers, but we had sort of tent poles. Allison's stressed. Allison's very stressed. Kasima's Kasima's very sick. sick. And Sarah's freaking out because Kira's been taken. Sick, stressed, freaking out. In a way, it sort of echoes back in, in, my, in my mind a little bit to season one, first episode, where she's kind of alone, and that's sort of Sarah's state. But she's a lot more desperate this time around. She has a lot more to lose. Can we back up the set? No, okay, just... we need to go, Faith. She's driven a pretty big wedge between everybody, and I hope that Felix will be by her side, but it's been a long couple of months. And I think he's getting tired and he's getting just a little bit fed up of constantly having to bail out the clone club. Allison, we left her in a state of denial and I think she's kind of still there, uh, definitely still there. I think everything that happened to her last season has sort of completely changed the fabri fabric of her life and, and there's no way to kind of get it back but she'll pretend that everything's good. I need to go out, it's, it's absolutely essential. At the end of, of the first season, he is outed as Allison's monitor. She thought it was Ainsley, and we all know how that went. Ainsley? And somehow he escaped under the radar. She has no idea. And uh, here he is secretly spying on his own wife. He's got ulterior motives, for sure. These samples aren't going to go to Dyad. I do my own research. This is my biology. It's my decision, OK? Okay. We really left with the confession of I'm sick. And so season two picks up with her facing her mortality, which I, I find really interesting because Cosima, to me, has always been the one that sort of sees life as this fascinating journey. And the relationship with Delphine is obviously in a kind of tenuous place as well. There's so much lying from both sides. There's so much deception. And at the same time, there's so much love and attraction. And, you know, she's been so screwed over by Delphine so many times. And yet she still keeps coming back. She can't stop loving her. And so it's this beautiful, it's romantic and beautiful and, compli and complicated. And yeah. I think the really cool thing about this show is that the problem is not that they're both girls, the problem is that they're both standing on different sides of science. You know, she's with Dyad and she's, you know, a, a true lefty science chick, you know, so how is that going to blend? And the fact that Cosima is so smart and makes these emotional mistakes um, has been a big thing that people debate without finding it unrealistic. Um, I mean, despite the fact that it's a great big clone monitor relationship. <laughs> yeah. Good, you made it. Sarah started a little something with Rachel. I don't know, I, I'm not sure if you could call it a war, but maybe it is a bit of a war. She kind of becomes Sarah's nemesis to some degree in season two. She started life as pro-clone. We had her in mind for the end of the first season. We wanted this sort of elite clone, one who felt she was nurtured to be better than all of the others, um, had this insight that the others didn't. She's a woman who's actually been kind of raised by a corporation, so she thinks differently than all of our other girls. 
And that's been pretty fun, exploring the new character that we set up last season. And uh, she's, uh, she's, she's tough. She's, she's tough. She's a tough chick. Rachel's a hard one to love until you get to know her. When Tat comes to set as Rachel is a bit like when she comes to set as Allison. You don't really want to, you know, get too close or you might get your head snapped off. <laughs> One of the th themes, I think, for season two is we're stronger together. In order to realize that, I think they have to become a little fractured. They're all trying to maintain their own lives and, and pursue their own, own uh, portions of the mystery, but it's not until they come together that, that the sisterhood can really kind of triumph in season two. I think now that we've done it once, there's new challenges, there's new kind of depths that we can go to with the characters and new explorations. It's not giving birth to them for the first time, it's now how do we get to know them more and how do we challenge what we know of them. And So that's the new challenge, right, is, is not kind of sitting back on old notions of who these people are. So it's, it's deepening it and, and allowing for them to shift. She's smarter than you think. Do one more thing to help her so I can put a bullet in your head. Paul's in kind of, uh, he's between a rock and a hard place. I think Paul and Sarah have always known that there's very little film of truth to anything they're saying or doing with each other. I think for Sarah that she fell for him in the way that he seemed to take care of her in a way and offer her comfort and offer her kind of abandoned and all these things, but I don't think Sarah ever got too attached to him. I think the betrayal is more like, who, who the hell can I trust at this point? You never know where his true allegiance lies, and I don't know, that's kind of where Paul was left off from last year. He's kind of left off with Rachel and, and having possibly to work for and wanting to help Sarah at the same time, so he's on both sides of the fence, as always. Who is Mrs. S? That's a big flashing question mark. I think Mrs. S has so many secrets that Sarah's sort of completely blown, blown away by and sort of like blindsided by and, and yet she needs her. Again, it's this thing of like, how do I trust you after I realize that you've been lying to me my whole life? Mostly what we learned about her in season one, I think is where she came from. And it's kind of her sort of devious or dubious path is alluded to a lot, but we don't, you know, we get to understand that she's, she's made of strong stuff and she doesn't, she doesn't brook any messers and she takes fantastic care of Kira. Herself and Sarah clash a lot, but you do get the idea that they're made of kind of similar stubborn stuff. Sarah and Mrs. S, I feel like the more we've played that relationship this year, the more Maria and I have discovered how similar they are and why they come up against each other so much. In season two, because the chips are down, because it's, um, there is clear and present danger for Kira, you see her do the things that we know she is capable of. She gets physical in order to protect her. Sarah, don't run. Come on. Last season, Art was just starting to crack the whole mystery. He was just beginning to realize that, uh, that the word clone existed in real life. And, uh, and uh, he's on the bubble. He's on the precipice of something big. Art is, is, I feel like, the, mo the, the like, moral center of this show. And like, I know Sarah trusts him, even though she can't necessarily trust him. But he's definitely stood up for her and taken care of her. And he's a good enough judge of character to recognize, for the most part, when he's being played and when he's not being played. You know, despite the fact that he, he had the wool pulled over his eyes for, for pretty much the entire season as to who she was. But she has something to offer. She does hold the key. Without her, where, where can he go? You know, she is the end for him, so he has to trust her. He really does. Working with Tatiana is always great. Like, it's always fun. You've got a script, obviously, but you never really know what she's gonna do. I like that quality in her. A lot of the time, I know she does a lot of prep, but I think she surprises herself a lot, too. But with her main characters now, it's amazing to uh, watch how quickly she can emotionally access those characters. I think my body understands the shifts now, whereas last year it felt like 
a thing I really had to put physically go, you know, into and, and really, and now my body, it's like it remembers, it has a muscle memory that, that's different than last year. Tat makes it easy to just respond to the different people. There's no confusion. When she is Kasima, she's Kasima. I go up and I talk to her about a scene. Uh, you know, if it's a Kasima scene or whatever, I, you know, start talking about the details of the scene. You can see Tat go to a place where she's instantly accessing it from Kasima's point of view, which Absolutely. is a really, really amazing um, thing to collaborate with. It's just great just to see the fan response and just how passionate they are about the show. I've had uh, loads and loads of, of Clone Club encounters online. Um, Clone Club's super active on Tumblr and Twitter and Facebook, and I get really, really kind tweets and some really crazy tweets. I see everything you guys do. I see it all. You know, I'm pretty good. Every once in a while I get recognized, but I was in the grocery store one day and I was just trying to buy like asparagus and diapers for my kids, like that crazy sort of combination day where, you know, and, uh, and, and I was recognized by like three different people in the produce section and one person in the baby food aisle and then the cashier and the guy. In the, and I just couldn't get away from it that day. And, and everybody was so stoked. They were all just sort of vibrating uh, about the show, which was amazing, you know, that the show gets people to that level. My best friend said I Googled my name and she was like, Evelyn, you gotta see this, there's something happening. And I think the first thing she saw was the YouTube videos of, um, you know, me and Tatiana making out to really soft, love, lovely music. And I was like, oh, the, these people are taking it and making it their own. They're these brilliant, uh, intellectual, sort of cerebral, responses to to these characters which is so great because it's it's it it validates us in a way because we put a lot of work into creating these characters and it's nice to see that people don't just sort of digest what they're seeing and forget about it they 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 really they take it in they they think about it they, they are able to articulate how it affects them and that's that's pretty cool because that's a big part of our job too is being affected it's fun, it's just fun that I get to jump into all these different worlds of all these different clones that are all so different. We've got kind of like, we're doing born identity with Sarah, we're doing a suburban psychodrama, we're doing a, a labby, geeky clone thing, we've got a, a corporate clone lording over everyone. That's some one thing I love about this show is that not only do each of the clone worlds have like a completely different tone, but each episode itself you know, we deal with horror, we deal with um, relationships, the intimacy of relationships, we deal with science, we deal with bureaucracy. It's like they, they each have a really unique tone to them. It's like we're shooting a different movie every time that we come to set.